I challenged you to find me a manga or graphic novel that was a comedy set in a countryside or rural setting with a main character who was an explorer and where the theme was survival. Y'all came up with some pretty great options and the one that I ended up reading was Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko or Yokohama Travel Log. We're going to talk a little bit about that in this video. Hello everybody, Justice R. Stone here, talking today about the manga Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko. This one's written by Hitoshi Ashinano. It was finished at 14 Tonkobon volumes, published between 1994 and 2006. It's actually well regarded. It won the Seiyun Award in 2007 for science fiction. And that's like a very major speculative fiction award that happens in Japan. It's an interesting manga be for a number of reasons, really. But there's a lot to kind of unpack. And, and I did re only read the first collected like omnibus edition that seven seas has put out i think it actually has maybe three or four tonko bone volumes collected inside of it but this one let's talk for, at first a little bit about whether this is a comedy whether it's like what the setting is who the main character is and is this actually about survival because that was the assignment this story is about a robot named alpha who is running this quiet little out of the way cafe basically because it belonged to her owner and her owner has left. I mean, at, at the point that I'm reading in the series, we don't know why we don't know where they've gone. We know that they're still alive, but that's about it. And really this whole series is just about Alpha's day to day. It's about how time passes about how, People get older, people that you didn't know before become friends and become an important part of your life. It's about how the world is constantly changing and in flux and how that looks to somebody who they themselves never change. It's a really actually pretty impactful manga. I was kind of surprised. Is it a comedy? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. This one's probably the closest fudge of those three point of those, sorry, of those four points. It's not so much like an uproarious laugh your guts out comedy. There's lots of moments where you smile. There's a couple moments where you kind of laugh in terms of being riotous comedy. It's really not that it's much more that heartwarming, make you smile kind of thing. I don't even know so much that the whole point of the, like the series is not meant to make you laugh per se. And I'm not trying to say that it's some like serious dour thing, but I think it's really just trying to make you appreciate the little things. And part of the little things of living is, you know, having things happen that kind of make you smile, make you laugh. And that's more the comedy type of thing in this book. So maybe a not quite hard comedy, but uh, I'll let you have it. Cause you know, there were times that I definitely thought it was a little bit humorous and smiled and stuff. It is definitely set out into the countryside. Cafe Alpha is so out of the way that in over 25 chapters in this first volume, I think we see only one couple that's actually there as a customer. Everybody else, it's only those who actually live in the area. And even then, it's only this older man and his grandson. There's a delivery girl. And then there's this sort of dude that's wandering around. There's a doctor. And then there's Alpha. There are literally like six, maybe seven characters in almost 25 or so, you know, chapters of this manga. It's, it's very quiet and very compact in that manner. So is it that way? Oh yeah. It's, it's nothing but countryside. It is just, there's tons of times where there's these 
beautifully drawn vistas and often alpha goes for rides on her moped out into the country it is most definitely hits that rural box and in terms of the main character being an explorer well that's absolutely true i mean i just said like there's a number of times where literally alpha she's just hopping on her moped to go check things out at one point in the book she gets a camera as a gift and so her thing is just to go out and see what pictures she might want to take she goes to spots that she visited with her owner she shows a definite curiousness about the world and a enjoyment of all of these small things that life has to offer and i really think actually it's partly the character of alpha that makes this thing work because alpha is this very secure character she doesn't try to pass herself off as anything other than being a robot she doesn't feel the need to be someone different depending on who she meets she is completely and entirely herself which is a kind spirited young lady who loves to create music who dances who loves to see the world and appreciates the people that she knows and who treat her well. In fact, it's funny because I think honestly, other than the one couple that we see, I don't know if anybody has paid for a cup of coffee in this whole series so far. <laughs> and in fact, there's actually one point where Alpha sits there saying that she thinks she drinks more than 80% of the coffee that the store makes. So it just kind of gives you an idea. So definitely we have a main character who is an explorer. But what about that theme of survival? Well, this one's very interesting because it is a post-apocalyptic story. It's a science fiction story. It's clearly well into the future because, of course, Alpha is virtually indistinguishable from human beings. And she's not the only robot like that. So clearly humanity has moved ahead with a number of robots that are virtually human-like. So the technology is far from where we are right now. But some kind of natural environmental disaster has occurred because we see that seasons aren't as extreme as they used to be. There's parts of Japan that have been swallowed by the ocean. The encroachment of the water on the land is like a constant thing. In fact, like one of the roads is washed out at one point that she was typically being used it feels very much like humanity is in decline and in fact i think at one point they actually state that like these are kind of like humanity's twilight years but what's really interesting is is that despite the fact that it is very clearly in the future it's returning to like an element of simplicity we never see somebody using a cell phone for instance we don't hear anything about like the net or any kind of major like computers or electronic infrastructure or anything it's everybody seems to very much just be chilling out and just doing what they got to do to live you know one of the characters that we meet it is like uses a flying fish to like catch other fish and earn an income it's very strange flying fish but i mean whatever uh you know the one character works at a gas station that probably sees hardly any customers at all it just feels like everything in the world is slowing down you know humanity is slowing down the world is slowing down it's it's almost like it i mean for a sake of metaphor, it is it is almost like a human being that's getting older in their life. They move slower. They take things slower. They don't really seem to have as many worries because, you know, they've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And it feels like that's how humanity is as a whole in this manga. And it's funny because when I read it, it gave me feelings of nostalgia because even though it's set in the future, it actually reminded me very much of how things were back in like the 80s, which of course the author of this would have grown up in. Um, I mean, even, even starting it in 1994, like the internet was not a thing, right? Like 
there was no mass consumerism of the internet in 1994. Uh, there were some message boards and stuff online, but it was absolutely nothing like what it is now. It was all in its infancy. And so it made me feel kind of nostalgic because it was like, well, this is kind of what you would have done. You know, I, you go out with your parents to a restaurant and literally you just sat in the restaurant and talked and maybe chatted to the waiter and stuff. Cause there was nothing else. You didn't have phones that you pulled out and looked at. You didn't monkey around with technology, watch a movie or something, sitting there in the restaurant or talk to somebody on the phone. Like none of that existed. So it was interesting to me because it kind of, even though it's science fiction set in the future, there was this element of like nostalgia to it. I, I think that it's a very cool concept because it really does set up this juxtaposition between Alpha, who does not grow old and does not age. And several times through the book, statements are made along the lines of how the passing of time is completely different to a robot as opposed to the people around her and the world around her and that the world itself has become completely impermanent because it's regularly changing in ways that are not always predictable. It has a really chill pace, but it feels very deliberate. And each story, even though they are mostly disconnected from each other, there's always at least a little something in the story that lets you know that it is set afterwards. Like the book is constantly moving forward and you're aware of that time passing as opposed to some books that do sort of vignette slice of life and you really you don't always know like is this from before this one or is it after this one and stuff because they're all interchangeable that's really not the case with this book everything moves with purpose there's meanings between the passing of time it's important add on to this the absolutely beautiful artwork in this one i mean ashinano has not gone hard with the heavy blacks and the you know shading and stuff that we see in in more recent manga it is this beautiful line work with lots of detail but because it doesn't have a lot of heavy blacks and stuff in it it makes even the images themselves just feel a little bit more open and a little bit more relaxed and it just seems to even the artwork seems to fall into that pace i mean to be honest i really like this one a heck of a lot more than i thought i would i i didn't know what to expect going into it i mean if you look at the cover of it 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 looks i mean well i mean it looks kind of like that era the 90s even into the 80s era type artwork but you know i thought well this is probably going to be the most manga of the of the choices and yet it it really spoke to me in a lot of ways uh it was incredibly relaxing to read there is a lot of textless frames there's it's a lot of the book is just the experience of that moving artwork and the movement of time and there aren't always dialogue to go with it everything in it just feels very deliberate and i really really enjoyed it really enjoyed it and i enjoyed that there wasn't a lot of spoon feeding element to it like we don't know what cause the world to change we don't encounter characters that are you know moaning about the fact about how awful the world's become and everything else like not at all actually it's it's just it's it's unlike really a lot of manga that i have read i mean i've read some chill stuff don't get me wrong but this is just on a different level of chill and at the same time there's this element of there's so many emotions in this book. I got so many emotions reading this book. It felt heartwarming because there was just so much kindness and decency in it. At the same time, like I said, there was that element of nostalgic feeling to it. And then there's also this little bit of melancholy because it's so clear that 
everything is just ending that you know it's 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 almost like humanity has just come to that point where they're just quietly willing just to go into that night and they're just going to live with the world as it is and whatever happens it happens it's so different compared to a lot of other stuff I, I've read. And I know that I am probably just going on and on in this video about different things, but I just felt like I wanted to talk about this one because you, you can't really pinpoint things down. Like you look at it and you go, is there character development? Well, not really, but that's not the point, you know, because there's no conflict or anything in this. It's not like... You know, the, the character of Takahiro, he's not there to go through trials and tribulations and be reshaped. And, you know, Alpha's not there to be shaped by hardship and everything else. They're just people living their lives and trying to live it as best they can and get what happiness they can out of it. It works because that's really the whole theme of this thing, or at least it certainly is at the point where I'm at in it. So... You know what? Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko, Yokohama Travelogue. I really loved it. Uh, and you know, I really am glad that it was referred to me. Uh, this was my hope with this whole role for reading that people would bring titles to my attention that I probably would never have read otherwise. And I hope that really for going forward that people will look at the titles that are being recommended in role for reading and find stuff for themselves that maybe they didn't know about and that they may really love and enjoy uh, because you know there's so much great stuff out there but it's really hard as a single person to find it all so it's great when you can have a community to help you find good stuff and uh Yokohama Travel Log, it's it's good stuff. Those are my thoughts on Yokohama Travel Log. And it's the first roll for reading. I currently have the second video up, and uh that's actually gonna come to a close this weekend. I'm gonna pick a title out of there, and uh I'll be here next Friday with that review. In the meantime, you know what? Head on over to the comments section of Roll for Reading Episode 1. You can see what other books people recommended that matched this particular theme. And, uh, you know, if you want to check them out, maybe you can see if uh, you think any of those would have matched it better. Let me know in the comments down below. And have you read this one? What are your thoughts? Does it get... Does it keep this pace for the entire series or does it kind of change a little bit? Don't don't spoil it because uh, I don't really want spoilers, but I'm just wondering if the, the mood and the pace of it kind of stays the same. In any case, thank you so much for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Like I said, check out my other role for reading uh, that's coming up and go back to the first one and you can see what other titles met that prompt and uh, see if there's anything in it that you really enjoy. Thanks for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Till then, bye bye for now.